Hola, it's Nola. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome, boo. I hope you stay. Okay, you stay. Yeah. If you guys like this video, please do leave a like, a comment, or if you are new, you can subscribe. Welcome to another episode of South African Saturdays. Well, it's not really another episode because we'll be rounding off last week's video on the diversity in South African media. This week, we'll be focusing on the show Sisi Sesla and how we can look at it as an example of becoming more diverse in our country. Also, how we need a show like this in South Africa at this moment because honestly, it's getting a little tense. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay. We're going to talk about City Sesla and how beautiful that connection and the interaction between all these different races is. First off, I just want to highlight how easy the show flows. There is no tension in the show nobody's pointing out to anyone else's race and i feel to overcome racism that is exactly what we should do we shouldn't be focusing on exactly what happened in the past but working more to not identify individuals as their race as an individual i am an individual i am nolo nolo palesatlamini and me i like a rock music you know it called play Hmm? You know it, ACDC? Hmm? You know it? I like! I like a lot! I like a Black Sabbath, okay? I like! Wow! And that is not exactly quote-unquote what a black person would like, but it is what I like as an individual. <laughs> And this is what this show does. It looks at each and every single character with their special personalities but not looking at their race and that's what makes it so just it's a breath of fresh air to see people just caring for each other and just being amongst each other and it's also a breath of fresh air to see how the cultures intertwine and how we are actually working on it to understand each other because different cultures call for different understanding on someone else's life and it's such a hilarious thing to go through watching city sesla shows you exactly what you go through on a daily basis trying to interact with other races out there and it's quite a funny process but it's also encouraging to you know the viewer that it's possible to have such a beautiful relationship with someone of another race without fighting without picking without scratching each other without burning shops you know what i mean do you know i hope you do you better know what i mean eh? another point that i want to raise is how comfortable everybody is there So not only the cast, but everybody around, everybody is comfortable. Honey, everybody comfortable in the show. People are just speaking their own languages whenever, however they want to speak them. Of course, Dana. When's an Indian Jones? Yes. Buzo ke riba di chonka jagle chin. Yeah, na uti di fanya ndlovu. E meet e kuto ne hip hop. Eh ne? Did you really say that? What did she say I said? Of course, there is always a flip to speak to the English speakers in English, but you can see some parts of the show where the English speakers are actually picking up on the other characters' native languages. Like this scene right here when Dave picks up the term Rabubi, 
for Spider Man. Some mamba when I rub your manga. What's that? Tamba, I won't let you hit him. How about we turn off Steven for the backer? Yes, in If I come with us, I'll put the coffee or the kunda. My copy. All right, just put the pedicure artist down, Mr. Rubuki. That is what happens on a daily basis. If you hear somebody speak their language often and you hear them speak, you know, certain phrases each and every single day, you're going to end up picking up those languages. Ben Guan Chen, a 19-year-old matric leader of the Hoerschool of Figaard Park in Bloemfontein, had five years ago learned in South Africa to come to a word Afrikaans to come. I can't so big English speak, not big English. And Afrikaans speak? No, no. I can't talk English. Tapo, can I have my pen back? Benefi, na gonga pena ham. I'm serious. I have to write. Okay, okay. Shapo here. Twa. And that might lead to uh, more understanding of not only the languages and the cultures, but also the way of living. As South Africans, we have different lifestyles and we are not too familiar with each other's lifestyles. When it comes to this show, it shows those lifestyles coming together and not fusing, but almost people starting to understand what's happening on the other side. Let's say, for instance, Letitia's hair. I'm going to mention that one because hair is a very big topic these days, you know? It's a very important thing, apparently. Having her wear her hair in its natural form all the time would then result in Dave Gary or Lou getting familiar with her natural hair and them not finding a problem with it because it is now something that they are accustomed to and they are used to. So this point is very important because as a South African woman, when it came to the advent of the cliques, I just felt as if it was a bit hypocritical at some point and I am no saint because I wear a wig. And I do wear a wig because my hair honestly is dried and damaged and I confess that my loneliness is killing me now. Hit me baby one more time. I'm kidding. I confess my hair was actually dry and damaged and that's why I cut it. Okay baby, that's why I cut it. But the, the point is if we want people to respect our hair as black South Africans, we don't need to fight for that respect. Number one, we need to respect our own hair and not see it as dried and damaged. Honey, if the shoe fits, if the shoe fits, baby, okay? Don't see it as dried and damaged. You wear it out if you want to wear it out. But this whole situation of the wig and all that stuff, it gotta go if you want to hold up to that standard, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. If you show other races that you are proud of who you are and you don't even fight them about whatever they're saying and you just go on living your life, you must not allow them to take the breath away from you, okay? You must tell them, whoa, me, I'm black. This is what black people do. Finish and clap. We don't want a problem. These are just some of the things that we can pick up from the show when it comes to living together. This show is honestly needed today. We need this type of vibe and this type of representation today because we are losing touch with the bond that we have been trying to build since Nelson Mandela did his thing for us. I feel like we're throwing it all away and that's not how it should be. As South Africans, we should honestly be focusing on building a new relationship instead of trying to fix a relationship we never had in the first place. We should be starting to build a new relationship with no stereotypes, with just whatever intentions we want to be putting in there. We got to move forward. We got to think about ourselves and we got to build a society that is going to be good for our children and also for our future otherwise all of us we are gonna go overseas like a Trevor like a who's this girl Charlize like a Elon Musk all of us are gonna go overseas this country is gonna die you want to see a country die 
That's how you make a country die. I'm very serious. I'm very I'm addressing the situation right now. It's got down ball, like great. Because guys, this country is just way too good. Where have you ever seen such a diverse country not upholding the beauty of its diversity? Where? Here, this is where it's happening. We have a rainbow nation, but we put the rainbow under the carpet. Why? Why we're doing that? We must put them that now, guys. No, it's not it's not good anymore. It's not good anymore. I don't look at I don't like. I don't like, okay? Kalebo Zahora, I don't like. That is the thing about City Sesla and not only just City Sesla, as I said, just in general the media south african media it needs to put some some color in there you know we must get our pencils we must we must get our rejectables we must start doing the coloring again we must start doing the the uniting again because when you make a space you're making a space for a fight we don't want to be fighting there ain't nothing i'm gonna do about the fact that i am a south african and i am proud to be a south african and i hope you are proud to be a south african too so go out there, spread the love, go say Hoya Mora, go say San Bonani, do the thing, when I kill, do the things. And while we are still on the topic of doing the things, guys, subscribe, like, comment, be busy when I kill, be busy. I would just like to say I love everyone who watches my videos and everyone outside there, even when at six o'clock on a saturday morning doing his lawn i love it when i'm even outside i love him when i want we eat you know? my fellow south africans i just want to send you out with this message like spread the love guys spread the love there's too much hate in this world at this moment and we cannot afford to have that hate kill our country i love you guys <laughs> and i just want to say <laughs> i'll be here same time same place next week Mwah. bye bye they're plotting against us I can feel it. When a powerful man is about to step down, the fight is on to take his place. What are you after? Their company. There's only one person that can take over if you step down.